Hey everyone, I'm Mike Harrell, co-founder of Slower, and I'm really honored today to have on stage with me uh, Root from Lyft and Rich from Adobe. Uh, when Jim and I first started talking about putting together a, a guest list of speakers, uh, one of the things we were really after was you know, folks who have reached uh, scale. And uh, so this is going to be a session where uh, it'll be an interactive session and hopefully we can talk a lot about uh, just, just how far these guys have gotten in the journey. So to kick things off, if you guys could just please introduce yourselves and what kind of role you have, Arup. Yeah, hey, uh, my name is Arup Malakar. Uh, I've been with Lyft for the last two and a half years and I uh, help build the data infrastructure at Lyft. My name is Richard Steck. I have been with uh, Adobe through an acquisition for 15 years now. I'm currently the Director of Cloud Engineering. Fantastic. So we spent some time before this uh, chatting about all kinds of things, and uh, one of the things that we both, uh, well, we all agreed on is, you know, let's dig into, you know, kind of what, what was the, the driver behind going multi-cloud, and, and Rich, maybe you can start off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think we went first multi-cloud um, back in 2006 uh, with, with some of the very first services from uh, an early cloud provider, and it's really just been a continuation ever since. So. Multi-cloud has been a, a long time journey for us uh, just because of some of the services and offerings that were available uh, there. And then more recently, over the last uh, five or six years, it's really been driven through a combination of, of factors. There's really, uh, I'd say, three, three main factors. Um, business partnerships has been a big one for Adobe. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of um, uh, common strategies and great customer alignment with some of the cloud providers. And, and to leverage those relationships to be more successful together has been a, a big one for us. Um, some of the other factors have been acquisition. We uh, uh, have done uh, quite a few acquisitions. There, there's, a, there's a slide uh, that floats around Adobe that shows every acquisition. You know, Photoshop was an acquisition. And so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of background in, in that within Adobe. And uh, this is just a continuation of, of that. Sometimes we don't get to pick. Uh, it was said earlier in the conference that uh, you know, no way is the business team going to say, oh, you're right. That's not a cloud provider that we want to do business with. Uh, let's not buy that company. Uh, that's, that's not uh, typically, you know, these, those are the, the details. Um, and then the last thing would really be around agility. Uh, we've got a number of uh, apps and services. There are some places where there's just there's unique um, utility from one cl cloud provider or another or, or within our, our private uh, co-location that makes a lot of sense for us to leverage. Yeah, just to add on that, like, I've definitely observed in various companies uh, that Cloud service over time has evolved a lot. Initially, it was just a, a compute service, uh, but with like managed service, uh, each cloud service has very distinctive deep, deep technologies that often you want to take advantage of. Um, so that I think uh, a lot of companies, when they have certain particular needs, they end up with different clouds because uh, a managed service often uh, solves a problem that you know they are looking to solve and. Rather than building that from scratch, it's often, you know, you want to focus on your core competence and not, you know, build everything from scratch. And uh, cloud does offer you so many managed services that it often makes sense to take advantage of those. Um, also, one thing I've observed in my previous companies is that uh, hackathons, et cetera, also one uh, way how people actually try new technologies. And often they find that that's a perfect fit for what they're trying to solve. And it does help you iterate much faster with uh, cloud managed services, and uh, you do end up with multi-cloud because of such initiatives as well. Yeah, what kind of learnings did you have from recent hackathons? Uh, yeah, so uh, like often like hackathons are like basically in tech companies, you know, when you have a few days to uh, do something, uh, prove a POC, and uh, in that context, you really want to move fast. Um, you just want to build things and prove the value. And you don't have often enough time to you know, go through normal procedure of you know, how you roll out a service. And uh, this cloud service is really awesome at that. You, know, you can really quickly uh, build something from scratch without having to you know, deal with VMs, data centers, and uh, we have seen that a lot, that you know, hackathon people who just uh, try and use cloud technologies out there. Now you mentioned acquisition. Oh, did you actually want to come? Yeah, on? I was going to. I was going to ask. I, so, something I found really interesting throughout yeah. the conference uh, that I've heard a lot of is 
I, I feel like it's kind of lowest common denominator, these infrastructure as a service with Kubernetes. You, you touched on yeah. uh, unique functionality yeah. between the cloud providers, which I, I feel is something that we're, we're not talking enough about. I, yeah. I mm -hmm. love Kubernetes. I run a Kubernetes team. It's mm -hmm. uh, quite sizable. We're, we're pretty uh, yeah. heavily invested, and I'm very optimistic about the future. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's folly to assume that 100% of my workloads are going to be on Kubernetes, and then that's going to solve all of my multi-cloud mm -hmm. uh, challenges. I think that uh, you know, we need to take a step back and, and really look at. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason that some of these things exist. There are unique offerings from some yeah. of the cloud providers that mm -hmm. uh, there's no equivalent to. And so to try to treat everything like a utility, mm -hmm. we're just, we're not there yet. Yeah. Are, do you find the same thing with Yeah, Lyft? I kind of feel the same that I think Kubernetes definitely solves a lot of the compute problems. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, like this data stores, online data stores, you want transactional guarantees, you want to, you want uh, disaster recovery, and like oftentimes uh, cloud data stores provide those out of the box, and uh, so it's kind of like not just compute anymore, you yeah. want to like, you know, build on those and like focus on uh, what's, what adds value to your business, uh, and I kind of agree that like Kubernetes alone probably would not uh, solve all of those problems and like those managed services, Spanner, DynamoDB, and various like such tools is like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that we talk a lot mm -hmm. about vendor lock-in or mm -hmm. platform lock-in, but yeah. there's a lot of other kinds of, of lock-in. There's skills lock-in, there's yeah. legal lock-in, yeah. yeah. there's mindset lock-in, yeah. there's yeah. architecture lock-in, mm -hmm. and I think that there, there's a lot of other things besides just uh, the, the, the cloud platform. Every decision that we make is, yeah. is some kind of trade-off yes. around risk. Mm -hmm. And um, I think our job as technologists is to help manage that risk yeah. that's appropriate yeah. for the business and really think right. about, you know, is the lock-in worth it yeah. or, or not? And how likely am I yeah. to execute against that? We talked about that earlier in the, right. in the conference right. around right. Right. insurance, yeah. right? I, yeah. I, I, sometimes I feel like we're, we're asking for a $5 deductible on, on our insurance, and I think if we took a step back and say, you know what, I, yeah. I have a thousand dollar deductible at home, maybe that's okay yeah, yeah. Uh, for some of these decisions as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah the vendor lock-in is a very interesting aspect that, you know, it gets talked enough, but then again, it's a trade-off, like, there's also value, like how soon you can go to the market, right? Absolutely. Yeah, like, I, I used yeah. to sit at, the, at, at, uh, at a conference from one of the public, public cloud providers yeah. before we were really heavily invested in there, yeah. and primarily just Nicolo, and I, I remember kind of rocking back and forth with my stomach thinking, yeah. I'm, I am locked in yeah. to a certain strategy, and I'm unable to take advantage of some of these great features. Yeah. My competitors are not. Yeah. They're out there saying, I don't care about multi-cloud, I don't yeah. care about any of these other uh, you know, strategic reasons, and they're, they're, they're going all in, yeah. and they're going lightning fast. Yeah. And with public cloud, yeah. uh, it's, 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 e it's easier than ever, I think, for these massive disruptions to happen yeah. from very small uh, companies yeah. that, that have a great future. I mean, look at Lyft. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think it's fantastic yeah. what you guys yeah. have been able to do. Yeah. yeah, and you know, we touched on earlier about how, uh, you know, the, the, the trade-offs with the OSS as well, like open source on top of IaaS, mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe you guys can just mm -hmm. riff on that a bit. You know, where, where are the trade-offs there? Yeah, so... Uh, uh, like I definitely have seen some trend uh, in recent startups, like which are growing. That you know, uh, like Lyft as a company, we definitely want to focus on our core competences, right? Like we are dear to solve transport, um, and like I do see a trend that you know, there's like the infrastructure pieces that cloud provide, be it Kubernetes, uh, EC2, or etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and on top of that, often I see open source stack that, and together this, we try to provide a platform for, you know, for, like for our business to grow. Uh, and slowly, slowly I see that uh, it sometimes swings, like, you know, like oftentimes uh, things that we as an organization used to run HDFS, like distributed file system, but when S3 come along, and it's a very mature uh, uh, service, and like similarly, Azure and like uh, GCP is offering that. You are like, oh, okay, we could take advantage of that, and rather than having to run and uh, carry the operational burden of running uh, the corresponding OSS service ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. And as we talk about some mm -hmm. of those, some of those services, some of them have, even though they are proprietary, yeah. um, there are drivers and other things that make it possible yeah, to really yeah. interact uh, in a yeah. similar way. Where yeah. you, you know maybe, again, these are trade offs, right? Do I yeah. want to add abstraction layers into my application? Mm -hmm. Do I want to add them as a proxy level that sits mm -hmm. in, on top or, right. or near my right. infrastructure? Yeah. 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 Uh, Adobe is also very heavily uh, leveraging open source. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, the vast majority of our of our mm -hmm. stack is mm -hmm. is really driven from open source and. Uh, we sometimes remind ourselves by looking at the, the number of lines of code that we have in our product mm -hmm. versus all of the lines of code. And, and you know, it's, it's amazing. It's shocking, right, to yeah. find that maybe we might be yeah. um, a very small percentage yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, is unique to us where uh, yeah. open source is a lot. So we're, we're big fans, and we do. Um, there's a lot of places where we do IaaS mm -hmm. with infrastructure on mm -hmm. top. Mm -hmm. And there are some places where we repeat that across multiple yeah. clouds. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there's trade-offs. And we now own that, that burden of making sure that it's the same. So we, we run uh, some of the great services that we've talked about earlier mm -hmm. today. Uh, Adobe runs uh, some of those from some of the partners here. And uh, my, my team's responsible to run one of those in, uh, in uh, two public clouds and one private cloud. Mm -hmm. And we run into complexity. Joseph uh, Sandoval talked about that a little bit yeah. earlier. Mm -hmm. We now have to test not one instance yeah. or one deployment, but three. And uh, there's some there's some burden there uh, that we have to really look at, and there's things where we feel like we're really good, and we're and we're, we finally got it figured out, and then something changes in one of the providers yeah. that that causes us to um, have to go back and reevaluate. Yeah, I mean that's one of the reasons why we put this show on, right? Yeah. Is to have mm -hmm. that kind of healthy dialogue around the yeah. debate and the trade-offs of multi-cloud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Uh, yeah, and kind of also wanted to touch upon the open source part. Like uh, that is also something we take advantage a lot and it's great like seeing a problem that's common to so many companies being solved there collaboratively sure. and like we all getting advantage out of it like uh, like most of our stack is open source as well and uh, that's where I think the trade-off part comes in that you know how much control we want like how much we actually have the need to change that layer uh, and like also kind of seeing in the future like how much need we would have tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. and uh, within Adobe, a conversation that we have to I think constantly uh, re yeah. remind ourselves is what are the things that are unique to us that add that customer yeah. value, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and is this that thing? Uh, I, I was talking to an engineering manager recently about a team. Uh, we have a core uh, Kubernetes team that's really focusing on making that. Mm -hmm. Adobe ready, yeah. right? There's a lot of gaps that we have to close to, to make it work within our ecosystem. And there was a team that's, that's doing their own. And, and they said, oh, great, we're solving customer problems by starting with the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And that, that really hit me. It was, a, it was a gut punch to say, you know, what, what we've got to really remember mm -hmm. uh, what uh, keeps the lights on. And it's really focusing on that customer value. So yeah, open source leveraging, uh, deduplication of effort wherever mm -hmm. possible, leveraging uh, native cloud services when mm -hmm. appropriate, mm -hmm. right? After you've done your risk evaluation, mm -hmm. I think are all good, good, mm -hmm. good yeah. strategies. Yeah, we also talked about uh, sometimes you don't want to acquire technology for technology's sake. It's almost like a FOMO, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, we don't want to miss out on, on, uh, on Kubernetes, right? I mean, we, we all want to say, yeah, yeah, I'm doing that, right? Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, I, I read an article recently about one of the cloud providers had published a white paper about how they did something internally, and uh, then they, you know, 10 years later changed how they're doing that. And, and, yeah. and the article was, you know, did we just go on a 10-year head fake? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that there are some things where we do have to evaluate and make sure that we're doing things that are appropriate and uh, impactful for our business, mm -hmm. uh, and not just because it's what everybody's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, w let's talk about that. Like, what course corrections would you guys identify over the years where you say, you know, you look back and you feel like you, you know, would have taken a different course? I, I mean, for, for us, I, so before I ran the, the Kubernetes team, I ran the architecture team, I still, I still do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did some very heavy evaluations. We had many teams from all over the world uh, for Adobe come together here in New York a, a few years ago. And uh, we looked at all of the, the metrics we could come up with, the engagement, the community, the activity, the conferences, the skills on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And we picked uh, Mesosphere and DCOS. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we considered Kubernetes at the time. And now today, um, the vast majority of our workloads are on DC, DCOS in, in production. And you know, that's the kind of thing everybody, you know, uh, Wish we would have, right? But th there's just there's no way to predict yeah. that some of these things can yeah. can shift overnight, and and um, we've got a lot of experience uh, with that. And we've really we've really made it work for us, and so uh, we 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 want to continue to go where there's the support from the community, mm -hmm. but we also have to be mindful of, you know, 
the holidays are a very important time for uh, Adobe. Uh, a lot of you may not know, but uh, Adobe is not just um, a Photoshop, but we do quite a bit on the um, digital marketing and digital experience space. And so this, the holidays is a huge time. And so, you know, we're, we, we'd love to accelerate that, but we're gonna put our customers first mm -hmm. and make sure that we're doing the right things at the right time for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. An important point to raise kind of is like, you know, a past decision we have made and now something new came up uh, seems much more promising than what we have built on. Um, sometimes we want to be agile. Yep. That, you know, if like I have chosen this, I have made this decision, but something else, if you find better, I want to build our platform in a way that we can switch that. But that also comes at a cost. Sure. Like that agility, like, you, we, you often have to build that adapter layer to be able to you know, switch easily. Uh, that is a cost yes. that could increase yeah. your time to market. Yep. So it's kind of often like a uh, constant uh, uh, like trade off. You have to continue to evaluate and you know, yeah. course correct if yeah. need be, but sometimes you are kind of stuck with some decisions you have made, I guess. Yeah, we, one of our architecture sayings is that any technology decision given enough time is a bad decision. Yeah. And, and we, we always know that whatever looks great in the crystal yeah. ball today, mm -hmm. uh, over a period, I mean, maybe, maybe TCIP, TCP IP was you know, the exception, right? Like that's, mm -hmm. if you made that bet a long time ago, uh, it's, it's paid off for the last 40 years, but yeah. that's great, yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of folks in this room are at different places in their journey. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give folks as they start to go down that path of, uh, thinking of bringing on a second cloud? Yeah, I would make sure that you really understand the, the reasons. Um, I would seriously make sure that you've got the skills mm -hmm. or a plan to get the skills uh, for that particular cloud provider because that, that's a huge one. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we, we can make this business decisions around, around why that's important, but we're gonna really need that, uh, the technology uh, experience to, to ramp up and match that, especially, you know, if you're, if you're moving slowly, that's fine. If you're moving aggressively, uh, like Adobe often does, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of investment. Um, I, again, we use things like, you know, LinkedIn skills to do uh, density calculations mm -hmm. on, you know, is this, is this a good idea? If we, if we choose this technology, are there even people to hire that can, that can help? Mm -hmm. Or do we have to do this ourselves? So my team is, I, I don't know how many times they've had to travel the world to go and do additional trainings on, mm -hmm. on things to really help accelerate that adoption. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you've got uh, the, the full support plan in, mm -hmm. in place and know that uh, you're probably gonna have some specialists that mm -hmm. really focus on deep layers, you know, maybe mm -hmm. networking for cloud one and storage for cloud two, mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that you've, you've got the plan to really support the people in that. It's really exciting. Yeah. There's a ton of great opportunity out there and people, you're gonna find a ton of people in your organization that are ready to jump at that, mm -hmm. um, but you've gotta be able to support them at mm -hmm. the organizational level, level which mm -hmm. might be moving to them to a different team, mm -hmm. going to an 80-20 model where they can continue to mm -hmm. you know, learn. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, things mm -hmm. that you need to be thinking about from the people side. Nice. Yeah. I'll comment on at least one aspect is that uh, fragmentation of data. Uh, like, I think multi-cloud picking uh, appropriate service often makes sense, like the service that's the most suitable. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the data world, uh, compute is often cheaper if it is closer to storage. Uh, so, and also like if you fragment your data across cloud, uh, combining that data to derive insight is often harder and much more expensive. Uh, so, like at least in multi-cloud, you probably don't would not want to. Uh, you would want to do a vertical by vertical, but for the same vertical uh, data warehouse, being an example of that, probably if you split that across multi-cloud, uh, that comes at a cost. Yeah. Well, good. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Mm -hmm. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Arup, Rich. Yeah, really appreciate great. it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks.